Okay, so first of all, I'm going to take this table here and put it on its side. So I will copy it and then paste it transposed. Then in order for these numbers here to be the area of these squares, I need to find out what the height and the width of these squares is going to be. And I will calculate that by taking the square root of these numbers. And so these numbers here will be the length of the sides of each of the squares. Then I need to work out the position of all of these squares. So this will be the first square, this one the second, the third and the fourth. And the first square will be on the top and the left hand side. The second one is on the top and the right hand side. The third one on the bottom and the left hand side. And the fourth one on the bottom and on the right. And then I need to put numbers to these positions. So I am going to make the middle here zero on both the y and the x axes. So all of the numbers on the top will be positive and all of the numbers on the bottom will be negative. Everything on the right will be positive and everything on the left will be negative. So the y values will be whether it is on the top or the bottom and the x values will be whether it is on the left or the right. And I am going to copy these numbers here and paste them as values and I will do that twice. Then everything that needs to be on the bottom needs to be a negative number. So I will put a minus in front of these two numbers here. And also everything that is on the left needs to be negative. So I will make these two numbers here negative as well. Then the next step is to line the x values up. So I need to line them up going from smallest to biggest. So the smallest number is this one here. And you can also think of this as being the biggest negative number. And then the next smallest number is this one here. Then I need to put in a zero. And then the next biggest number is this one here. And then the biggest number overall is this one here. And so these are the x values. And I will just highlight them. And all of these squares will have the same x values. And they will all have different y values. So that is what we will put in next. And I'll copy the headings from up here. And then I'll also copy these numbers and paste them into the middle. So they line up with the zero on the x axis as all of these squares need to reach the center. For the first square, this is going to be on the left hand side. So I will drag this number up towards the negative numbers until it lines up with the minus 4.58 on the x axis. Then the second square is going to be on the right hand side. So I will drag this number down towards the positive numbers until it reaches the 6.08 on the x axis. For the third square, this is going to be on the left hand side. So I'll drag this number upwards towards the negative numbers on the x axis until it reaches the minus 7.07. .07. And I need to have a third copy of the number in the middle here, because all of these squares have to share the same x axis. And so I need an extra copy of the number for when it crosses over the 4.58 here. Then for the fourth square, this will be on the right hand side. And so I'll drag this number down towards the positive numbers on the x axis until it lines up with the 14.7 here. And again, we need a third copy of this number for when it crosses over the 6.08. Now that we have all of the numbers set up the way that we want them, I will select all of this here. 
and make sure to include the headings as well. If not, it will get confused by all of the blank cells. Then go to insert and insert an area chart. I'll move this one here out of the way. And there are lots of changes that we need to make to this chart to get it to look the way that we want it to. First of all, we need to add in the X values. So right click and select data. And then for the horizontal axes labels, select edit. And then select the X values here and OK and OK again. But this hasn't actually changed the chart the way that we wanted it to because it's still seeing all of these numbers as text. So double click on the X axis to open up the formatting bar and then go to axis options and change the axis type to date as this is the closest that we can get to numbers. Then select any one of these shapes and move it to the secondary axis and then move it back to the primary axis. And this changes all of these shapes into squares. Now this shouldn't work, but it does, so we're just gonna go with it. And now we can see how all of this is working. So if we look at the first square here, for example, the first X value is minus 4.58, and that's this dot here. The first Y value is 4.58, and that's this dot here. The next X value is zero, and that's this dot here. And the next Y value is 4.58 again, and that's this dot here. And so it draws a square between these four points. If we look at the fourth square, you'll see that it has three X values at zero, six, and 14, and that's these three dots at the top here. And then all three of the Y values are minus 14.7. And that's these three dots forming a line here at the bottom. And we need these extra two dots in the middle because of when it crosses over the smaller shape on top. If I delete this number here, then the shape will just disappear. And if it's a zero, then it becomes this weird triangle thing. So we need to have that extra third copy of the number in the middle. Now there's two major problems with using dates on the X axis like this. First of all, dates always have to be whole numbers. So it's basically ignoring everything after the decimal point in all of these numbers. In order to fix this, I'm going to make all of the numbers 100 times bigger. So I'll type the number 100 in here and then copy it. Select all of these numbers and right click and then paste special. And the operation will be multiply. And so we will times all of these numbers by 100. Then I'll just hide the decimal points. And this messes up the shapes because of all of these zeros in here now. So we'll remove these zeros. I'll press Control H to open up the Find and Replace box. I will find all of these zeros and replace them with nothing. And then make sure to tick the Match Entire Cell Contents box so that I don't accidentally remove these zeros from in the middle of the numbers. And if you don't see these options here, you just need to click on the Options button and Replace All. And now all of these zeros have disappeared and we go back to the squares. Then the second problem with using the dates is that dates can't be negative numbers. So all of the numbers on this side of the X axis have disappeared. In order to fix this, I'm going to add a fixed amount to all of the X values to push them all to the right hand side. So I'll add in a new column here and then take the X values and add 2000 to them. The number that you have to add will vary depending on the numbers that you are working with. You just have to add an amount which is large enough to make all of the X values positive. Now select the chart and right click and select data and edit the horizontal axis labels again. And this time we'll select the values in this column and OK and OK again. 
and now all of the x values are positive. The next step is to set the axes maximum and minimum bounds. At the moment, the middle is at 2000 on the x axis and I need the same amount of space on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. So I will make the axis minimum 500, then the center is at 2000, and the gap between these two numbers is 1500, and so I need the gap between the center and the axis maximum to also be 1500. So that will mean that the axis maximum will be 3,500. Now, in order to change the axis minimum and maximum, these need to be formatted as dates. So I'm going to change the format of these numbers so that they are dates, so I know what date I need to put in. So this here is going to become 1405-1901. And then the maximum will become 3107-1909. And I'll also change the to be 100 days so that we can see that this has actually worked. So now the minimum is 500 and the center is 2000. So the gap on this side is 1500. And then the axis maximum is 3,500, so the gap between the 2,000 in the center and the axis maximum is also 1,500. The next step is to change the axis maximum and minimum on the y axis, but this is much easier. I can just change the minimum to minus 1,500 and the maximum to positive 1,500. Now that we've set all the axes maximum and minimums, we can just delete the axes because we no longer need them. And we will also delete everything else as well. Then the next step is to change the chart area so that it is an actual square. So we'll make the height 10 centimeters and the width 10 centimeters as well. Now, in order to check that the squares are actual squares, I will draw a shape over the top of them. So select the rectangle tool and then hold down shift while drawing the shape over the top of one of the other squares. And then I'll remove the fill and we can see that this shape here is a square, so the height and the width are both 4.54 centimeters. And we can see that it lines up with the square underneath. So we know that the shapes in the chart are actually squares. Now let's change the color of these. So I'll change this one to dark green and this one to light green, this one to dark orange, and this one to light orange. Okay, so in this video, I have shown you how to make a proportional area chart in Excel, and that is everything.